right, let's move on to segment two. Let's talk about some more football. NFL, we're halfway home, Cedric, halfway through the NFL season, and it's time to do a little bit of reflecting on, uh, on superlatives, what's been good, what's been bad. Who's been the best player in the league thus far from your perspective? Uh, offensively, Russell Wilson. Um, people like me, and it tells you how much I don't know, I thought that the Seahawks would take a step back this year. Russell Wilson lost Doug Baldwin to retirement, and that was his favorite receiver. But all Russell Wilson has done is dominate the competition. 22 touchdowns, just one interception. I give him the slight edge over Christian McCaffrey, who's having a great season with Carolina. I put Russ as the MVP because uh, Christian McCaffrey's team's not playing as well overall, and Russ has the uh, – Seattle Seahawks at a seven and two record, so he gets the edge for me. Uh, defensively, I, I would go with Nick Bosa for the 49ers. He might be my defensive MVP. Mm. He's racking up sacks, and they're the best front four in football, and they're probably the best story of the first half uh, running away with the NFC West. Yeah, I, uh, I I I love Nick Bosa and that defensive MB, MVP. You know, and here he is, rookie. You know, may may sweep both those awards, winning uh, MVP or defensive uh, most valuable player and rookie of the year. It's hard to argue. I mean, the the 49ers, I think people thought they would be improved, but I don't think anybody thought they'd be this improved. That and they may be the biggest surprise in my mind uh, because I really did not see this level of play coming from the 49ers. Cedric, who's, who's your biggest surprise? Is it a team? Is it for better? Is it for worse? What, what's your biggest surprise thus far? The Cleveland Browns mm. is my biggest surprise. Uh, well, I thought, you know, I, I didn't know that they, they handed over the Lombardi Trophy in August. Um, they were scheduling that ticker tape parade in Cleveland, um, and it was going to run in, like, late August before the season. Uh, then they ended up finding out they had to play football games in September, October, and November, they are a dumpster fire. Baker Mayfield is under fire. The head coach is under fire. Odell Beckham's whining about not getting balls thrown his way. And so it's really uh, pick to win the NFC North, I mean, the AFC North, and, and they're, they're looking up at, at everybody except the Bengals who are bad. I, th I think it's probably the most surprising uh, development of the first half. The Buffalo Bills um, are, are six and two. I think that's a feel good story. But Cleveland uh, just getting beat every week, it seems, is a really, really bad situation. And I, I didn't see this coming. I, I picked Pittsburgh to win the division because they're Pittsburgh and they know how to win. Uh, Cleveland's one of the best teams on paper, but championships are won on paper, Jen. Yeah. They're won on football fields. Yeah, I think they have been a huge surprise. And, you know, I think the the suspicion was that there might be some growing pains or some bumps you know obviously a first year coach the expectations that grew during the off season with their acquisitions the, the talent that they the bump they saw in talent but uh you know i don't think anybody expected two and six through the first half for the cleveland browns yes this you know is probably the tougher portion of their schedule but you know two and six is going to be really really hard to to, to come back we you know they have the talent to do it but they've just shown they're not showing the trajectory that makes you think they're getting there so that has been a huge surprise I think a, a big surprise for me has been the number of really talented quarterbacks just quarterbacks in general frankly I, I we can just take out the talented part starting quarterbacks that have gone down this season I mean uh, there there's a number out there that 46 different quarterbacks have started at least one game thus far in the NFL. That's a wow. lot of guys starting games at quarterback. We've obviously seen Patrick Mahomes go down, Drew Brees go down, Ben Roethlisberger has been out. Uh, you know, some really talented guys, some guys also getting benched and Andy Dalton, Cam Newton now on IR for the rest of the year. So some big names at quarterback that have, uh, you know, taken either a, a seat on the bench or have been injured. Uh, you know, but it's also been it's been fun to see some of the guys that have emerged. You know, Gardner Minshew, the uh, the the uh, Fu Man chewed mustached uh, quarterback. <laughs> Cedric, we'd like to see you during No Shave oh, no, November. No, you don't. You don't want to see that. I, I guarantee you that. But there have been I'm some ugly, guys that have. I'm ugly enough. I'm not trying to make it worse. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, you know, guys like Minshaw and, and Teddy Bridgewater, they've stepped up and been, uh, when you talk about surprises, we maybe didn't see them coming. Lamar Jackson having a breakout year. So there's been some pleasant surprises, too. Uh, so, you know, that, that comes to mind. I, I wonder, you know, you were, you were talking about the, um, the problems with the Browns and, uh, you know, some other teams maybe falling below expectations. Is there a coach, Cedric, you feel like that might be on the hottest seat at this point? Uh, we heard Chance uh, fire Adam uh, Gase, the, the coach for the Jets. I mean, who, who's maybe most likely to get the ax next in the NFL? Uh, Dan Quinn for Atlanta. He's gone. Boy, that's, and, yeah. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with Freddie Kitchens in Cleveland, but he needs to go too. But Dan Quinn, they never got over leading 28-3 in the Super Bowl and not getting it done mm -hmm. in Houston against the Patriots. And they haven't been the same since. And uh, I think that team has quit on Dan Quinn. Matty Ice is hurt. And it, it's time for a change. I know Arthur Blank loves them. Uh, they're good friends. But uh, the product that they're putting on the field right now is be below poor. And they got that spanking brand new stadium in Atlanta that's hosting a Super Bowl. They're going to have to make some changes on that coaching staff. And Dan Quinn's going to be the first to go. Uh, I think Freddie Kitchens will probably be after him, but Dan Quinn for sure in Atlanta. Yeah, and that's been a, that's been a surprise. You know, you talk about teams you thought would be pretty good, and you know, Atlanta maybe not a lot of hubbub about them, but you thought, well, they're they'll be in the mix, they'll be right there. They just haven't been they haven't been anywhere close to to good at all this season. So yeah, that does seem like that's that's likely. You know, and Cedric, it's interesting. You know, talking about Kitchens and some of these other guys that might be uh, that might be ushered out. The NFL has, has definitely uh, gotten comfortable with firing first-year guys. And, you know, that, that it, it creates upheaval, obviously. Um, but at the same time, it, it seems like teams, if they feel like the, it's not the right guy for them or it's not working, they're not afraid to pull the trigger. And, you know, a guy like Freddie Kitchens, with all the talent that – Cleveland went out and, and got and aspired to have this team that was going to be different than the Cleveland Browns of the last 10, 20 years. And here they sit again with disappointment. I got to think that's not sitting well as they're writing big checks to Odell Beckham and, and all these other guys. So I would, I would expect that that would, that would be a, a, a definite change in the offseason. But, um, you know, lots of, lots of coaches that we could see go. You know, I, I think one that a lot of people in our neck of the woods are curious about is always Dallas. You know, how long is Jerry Jones going to stay the course there? I think that I think things are pretty good in that regard. Is your sense that uh, that all is stable? I mean, nothing is truly stable with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you, you can't say from week to week. But do you feel like that's a situation that has sort of uh, found a found a, a a spot where it's it's comfortable right now? I think so. Uh, it depends on Jerry, and I think he's waiting to see if Jason Garrett can win two playoff games and get them to a, an NFC championship game. If so, Jason Garrett will get extended. But if they just do the same old, either win, lose their first one or win one and lose one, yeah. then Jason Garrett's probably going to be gone. Um, uh, he, this team is ready to play in a Super Bowl. Elite quarter, uh, I guess he's an elite quarterback. He's a top 10, yeah. top 15 quarterback. Elite running back, elite offensive line, really good defense. Uh, elite uh, receiver one in Amari Cooper. So a uh, good kicking game. So they, they have the pieces in place to make a move. They have to make a move now because you can't just assume. It's not like um, it's not like we were growing up when we knew that everybody would be um, would, would be in the uh, 10 years with the same team, Jen. Yeah. Uh, people move. Free agency has changed that game. So yeah. this particular nucleus, this particular team is built for a Super Bowl. And if uh, Jason Garrett doesn't at least get them to the NFC Championship game, he's going to be gone. And I bet Lincoln Riley's phone's going to be ringing. Yeah, and that's, as I said, not only interest around uh, our neck of the woods because of the Cowboys being such a such a, a fan favorite around here, but, you know, clearly is Lincoln Riley, the Oklahoma coach, first on the list if Jason Garrett's gone? I have to think he's, he's going to get a call. There, I don't think there's any doubt about that. What happens then, I have no idea. But... Um, I definitely think his star just continues to rise as, you know, different, uh, different players keep coming in to play quarterback in his system, and yet Oklahoma just keeps winning 
uh, just keeps rolling up points and yards. It's hard to ignore that. Uh, even if Jerry Jones' team was far, far away, I think he'd still be taking notice of uh, Lincoln Riley. But since he's just down the road, I have to think that's an obvious, uh, obvious thing for him. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs>